Okay, welcome back to our intermittent series on data visualization with ggplot. This, as per usual, is being done in the RStudio Cloud project that I've got listed here. So I would click on that, which I'm going to shortcut to by tabbing over here. And we find the script that we have been working on in the previous uh, episode. So, where I left things was uh, at this point where we have this code that we've uh, got nicely organized, like we've created the, the, the code that generated this pretty GG plot, we've tidied it up a little bit, and then where I left it was asking uh, some generic kind of questions like, what are the variables, what are the geoms, what are the functions, and what do they do? So let's start with the question of what are the functions? Functions here in, in R and in other program languages are the things that do something in the language. So for example, the so ggplot over here is a function and what it does is create the ggplot, like it creates the plot object. Geom point is a function as well, and what it does is add a layer uh, to a ggplot that has the nice scatter plots. Geom smooth is a function, and what it does is add a regression line. But those are not all of the functions in this code. For example, uh, as is also a function, and what it does is define a mapping. It tells you how to map data onto plots. So you, if, you, if you want to think of it in these terms, functions act a lot like ver verbs. They're doing things. Okay. The What else do we want to say about functions? Functions generally take inputs, and those inputs uh, are called arguments. So for example, data is an argument to ggplot. Mapping is an argument to ggplot. Mapping is an argument to geompoint. X is an argument to AS. Y is an argument to AS, and so on. So the things that you see on those left-hand side of those equal signs, those are the arguments for the function. When we want to specify particular values that those arguments might take, that's when we look at the things on the right hand side. So MPG, the miles per gallon data set, is kind of like a, a value. It is the thing that ggplot uses for its data. Dispol, the engine displacement, is the thing that AS uses to define an X coordinate. Highway mileage is the thing that AS uses to um, uh, <coughs> Uh, specify the y coordinate. So these things are variables. So mpeg is a variable. The dispel value inside of mpeg is also a variable. Same with color, with sil. These things are are variables, and they're kind of like nouns or objects and so on. Like, as with a lot of things, I'm oversimplifying a little bit here with this explanation, but it's a good place to start. So the variables are our objects, the functions are the things that, that take actions on those objects. The geoms, so just to finish answering my question, so that, that's the main thing I wanted you to take for this. The other things I wanted to point out just briefly is that geoms are a, ty are a, specific, a particular type of functions. And finally, the answer to the last question I have is why did I say that this is the same code as before, like when I had this code over here, why is this code essentially the same? And the answer is that the white space, like all of those little returns and, you know, like line, line returns, new lines, uh, aren't actually meaningful in R. That's all. Wasn't a difficult question, wasn't intended to be hard. Okay, so the exercise that I gave you uh, was like hopefully a really easy one and the point of it really was just to get you to uh, get used to working in scripts that 
you know, I haven't written for you, like, I did write it for you, but the point is you open the file, you read it, you sourced the script, and what you saw is that it loaded a data set using a function that I haven't introduced yet, but will appear in the next series. Uh, so this loaded the data, we then created a picture from it, and we plotted that picture. Notice I use plot here rather than print. When it comes to ggplots, plot works exactly the same as print. That's not true in general, but it is true for data visualization with ggplot. Anyway, when you did that, you'd get this pretty picture of a dinosaur. Okay, cool. Hopefully you got to there, and so we get to start the next section, which is about naming things, or about names. A lot of things in, our, in this world have names, um, and this is uh, as true within R as it is uh, within real life. So if we have a look inside this, just the, the code that I used in the little toy exercise, um, there is a name here, and I kind of g gave it away by tabbing forward. When I say ggplot data equals dino, um, data is the name of an argument, of the data argument. But I don't always have to give the name uh, when typing my commands. So if I had just typed ggplot dino, um, that would function exactly the same and this would generate the dinosaur picture that you see just fine. So the language that we use is when you see co um, uh, a command which has the form like this, ggplot data equals dino, um, that's a named, like that's a calling a function using a named argument. When I write the same thing like this, ggplot dino, I'm calling it without using any names. In a moment I will try to make clear how R can tell these two, tell that these are the same, but give me a Give me a moment. Okay, when we look at this code, you can actually see there are unnamed arguments all over the place. So where I wrote reads CSV um, this, the, this string here, the, I didn't specify a name. There's no name here either, and there's no name there. So there's quite a few things that don't have names, and R still knows how to use them. This is a named argument because I've said mapping equals. I could get rid of that. So I could have just gone g on point as like that. In fact, I could take this further. X and Y, I didn't need those either. I could have just gone like this. I could have said as horizontal vertical. And in fact, I could simplify it further by deleting some white space. And then I get something that looks like this. g on point as horizontal vertical. The big thing I want you to take away is firstly, this is really compact code. In comparison to what I gave you to use in that exercise, the, there we go, this here spans what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine odd lines to do the same thing after I've stripped out the argument names, we can do it in three lines. Often you will see um, ggplot code written like that in this really condensed form. I'm not going to generally suggest that for novices or beginners because I think it's useful to be clearer about what you're doing, but when you go out in the wild and see things, you'll often see our code written like that. So what I'm going to do is, before um, moving on to the next section, what I want to do quickly is tab back over here and go back through uh, some code uh, that we wrote previously, just to give you a sense, just to try and explain a little more about how R knows how to handle these things. Let's imagine we go back to the MPEG data. So I'm going to go ggplot, yeah, ggplot, and I'm just typing at the console uh, here rather than doing it as a script. And notice the little pop up that comes up there in yellow when it says ggplot data equals null. Let's ignore the null bit for the moment. Mapping equals blah blah blah. Notice that R knows something about what arguments ggplot has and it knows what order they're in. So the, the, ah, wait I need that back. Give it back to me. There we go. The first argument to ggplot is data and the second argument is mapping. 
So if I go like this and just type in MPG and don't tell R what argument it should have, R just assumes it's the first argument. So it will say, well, you didn't give me a name, so I'm going to assume that the first thing you entered is the first thing that I'm expecting, so I'm going to treat it like it's the data argument. And that works fine. So if I, you know, that just gives me a boring blank plot, but if I do that, I can bring up, I can do the same thing a second time. So normally, again, if I went, if I, I just hit tab here to bring up my little context specific menu. So the first argument was data, and I used MPEG for that. The second argument is mapping. So I could type mapping equals, or I could just say, well, R will, all re R will know what I'm talking about, so I'll just go AS, um, and again, notice the pop-up. Uh, X and Y are the first two arguments to AS. Again, I can do it with tab and get that version. So I don't have to go X equals dispel. What I can do instead is just type dispel. Yeah, well, I could if I can type. Dispel, highway, and that and then I just go plus geom point now we've got data we've got a mapping and we've got a geometry so now we can go like that and we get our uh, plot that we started with so as a general rule of thumb I would say that when you're a novice when you're just getting started it's better to name your argument so if I just hit the up arrow to bring this back, I would normally suggest do it the long and slow way. So data equals MPEG. Um, I just call it MPEG. I don't know why. Uh, mapping equals AS blah blah blah. And we would say X equals dispel, Y equals highway. So I would generally suggest doing it like that in this more verbose fashion. And that still works. That gives you the same answer. But that's mostly for your benefit, to help you remember what each of those things does. If I wanted to add a third aesthetic here though, if I just go tab here, notice it doesn't give me anything else. Like it gave me Y and X, but it's not giving me, um, it, it gave me Y and X before, but it, it doesn't give me anything else. Notice what it does say though is this dot dot dots. Anytime you see dot dot dots, it means other things go in here and essentially the short version of it is any other arguments that you want to specify you actually have to put the name in so if I wanted color now I'm running out of room here but if I wanted color I would actually have to give it let's say cylinders I would have to do that by name but if I go like this and delete that and delete that and delete that, R doesn't like it. Or well, it gave me a plot, but it doesn't have the color there because it didn't know what to do with that third argument. So you, you actually do have to name the argument in that case. All right, that's everything that I really wanted to say about names for now. Um, most of what I was going to suggest next is, uh, oops, wait a minute another exercise. So if we go back over here, we find that there is um, an exercise uh, six and seven, uh, which will, um, uh, so six, sorry, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, and ten. In the class, at this point, what I generally suggest is you do these things at your own pace. So what you'll see when you look at these is that, say, here's exercise 7, uh, erroneously called exercise 3 in the text there, whatever. Um, in each case, what it's got is some code that you have to go and fix up, like, oops, there's an emoji there rather than something sensible. So it will do that using this data dino uh, CSV file. 
um, and it'll also use some real data uh, which uh, I collected, uh, well I didn't collect, I was involved, I was named on the paper in which somebody else did all of the hard empirical work. So that'll lead you through some data analysis of those papers. And what I will do in ah, here. So the next section is basically some do-it-yourself exercises which will be this emoji translation, playing around with some forensic handwriting expertise. And in the next uh, section I'm going to assume that you've done them and in the next episode I will talk a little bit about the results for those and start wrapping some things up. Okay, so I'm going to stop here.